All right. Look at how clicky clacky my mouse is. Ooh, maybe I can add. Maybe I can add the image of the suit, perhaps. Oh, it's so big. Why do I pick plaids? Hello, everybody. Welcome. doesn't look too bad. This is what I get for picking a tweet. A tw <laughs> this is what I get for picking a ounce tooth plaid. Oh, I've just moved it away from my face. Rosemary. Okay, now I just gotta readjust all of this because the plaid looks really fun when it's really small. All right, I'll move this. I guess I'll keep this here. Oh, you guys watch me mumble. Um, moving around my chat boxes on my third screen here. sort of see this. Close enough. And if you hear um, some indignant meowing, we have my, my foster cat uh, helping co-host today. As well as in the chat on the Restream bot, we have Eric. And um, I'll do introductions at the 10 minute mark after after the hour. Yeah? Well, we're not going out today, okay? Okay, here it is. All right, closing that, pulling up my cheat sheets here. So who in the chat has already seen the stream from la from a uh, the part one stream from two weeks ago. Because we're going to be finishing up the garment. Last, last time we had the stream, we made the, we started the pants, but then we made the jacket as well. And today we'll be making 
We'll be finishing up everything, hopefully. In, in two hours, we'll see. I need to make sure this actually works. Okay, there it is. Grabbing all of our historical references for the chat later, so prepare your uh, prepare yourselves. I think I want this one. New. Oh, I missed the chat here. Yeah, Blender's a great powerhouse. I agree with Rosemary on these. Um, Blender's a good powerhouse, but it, it like like what Rosemary is saying, it's um, not specifically made for clothing, and the simulation is, is going to be very different as well as how you make the clothes is very different. So they're both good softwares, obviously. Eight minutes. So we have Rosemary, who was here for the previous stream, because I can share the first half with you before we get started. For those of you who were not here for the previous stream, All right, cool. So we've got two people here, SK, and we have Rosemary who were here previously from two weeks ago's stream. I'm just going to say last stream. Oop. 
For those of you who are here and have not seen our previous stream, here is a link to that for later. This is for both Twitch and for YouTube. For Twitch, you can still access it, but over time, we will let it run out for the 14 days. So in the previous stream, we made this coat and we started these pants. All right, so let's go ahead and get started here. So hello everyone, I am Megan and I work for Marvelous Designer as a 3D designer and community manager. So you'll see me in the Discord and you'll see me sometimes answering questions on our forum. And in the chat, we also have Eric. Eric also works for Marvelous Designer as the US Business Development Manager. And he will be helping me answer questions and moderate the chat when I am finishing up this build here. So to start things off, I'm gonna start um, sharing links in the chat here. So I've already shared the previous stream link. If you're not on our YouTube channel, um, let me grab that at first. For those of you who are watching on Twitch, here is just the link to our YouTube channel where we do have the previous streams saved in perpetuity, as well as we have the um, other tutorials as well, which I will link our beginner tutorials for you. For those of you who've never used Marvelous Designer before, these are free beginner tutorials on how to use it, best practices. Oh. <laughs> I think Eric's also helping me here. <laughs> and as well as in I think my restream bot's freaking out. Um, as well as, there we go. Delete, I don't wanna post the same thing eight times. As well as here's the link to our Discord channel where Rosemary's actually from. She's one of our power users. And she is, uh, she's joined us today, which is great. It's great to see Rosemary. She's also working on a Victorian garment as well. So if you join our Discord, you can chat with other users. You can have, have other users help give you advice, problem solve, share resources, which I have shared a bunch of the resources specifically for this um, in the Discord, as well as I will share them here again. And you can share your work there. You can talk with other users of Marvelous Designer and make new friends, really. Uh, as well as, I think the last one for the two more, two more links. For those of you who aren't aware, obviously, uh, here's a link to our website where you can download Marvelous Designer and, um, test it out for 30 days for free. As well as those of you who potentially have any future support questions, here is our support email as well as you can do it through the website. But here's our support email. If you're encountering any technical issues with Marvelous Designer, feel free to contact us through there so that you can get some technical support. And then for those of you who have just joined, I will copy and paste the previous stream one more time. Okay, and... All right, I will leave it up to the chat in this case. You can go to the previous stream where I do have all the links for the resources, for historical resources for this, including some patterns um, and some textbooks. I will post one from archive.org where I have the, got the coat from. A sec, coat. So 
So that's where we made the coat from and we did try to use the pants from that, but I did end up finding a better pattern and I, I will show you. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm gonna move my cheat sheet out of the way. Close this. And swap over to my middle screen. Okay, so here is that sack coat that we made previously. And I do want to, I just wanted you to see this. This is what we made in the previous stream. And then I'm going to open up the other pant project. Oh, sure. Twine sack coat. And I'm gonna show you the old, the other pant pattern and then I'm gonna compare the uh, better one that I did find. These patterns are quite old. A lot of these are obviously 1888 and above. So this this is where we stopped last uh, stream. We were showing, we were comparing the different uh, pants, but I'm gonna go ahead and I made the pre another pair of pants and I just wanna show you cause we can go through it all if you'd like, but I'm going to add, I think it's the project this better pair of walking pants. Oh, fine. I think it's the, I saved it as a garment. Add garment. Uh, save it as a garment. Okay. I'll stack them on top of each other so we can compare pants. And then I'm going to move them. Just so we can see. So I did want to show you. I, I will be making the second pair of pants here that I just imported. They are far more accurate than the self-balancing system, which I did link. The, the, for the lightest link that I put in the chat, that one is the self-balancing system from the archive.org. It's making um, a block, which does not have some of the important fitting pieces, as you can see here. The back does not fit as well as it. The back does not fit as well as the one from, let me grab that sheet, just so you can look at it from the Cutter's Practical Guide to Cutting. <laughs> to cutting all kinds of trousers, breeches, and knickers. <laughs> knickers, they little, little pants. So this is the pair of pants that comes with Marvelous Designer. This is the base pair of pants that comes with Marvelous Designer. Uh, at least for the older versions, I, I, I always save the older versions just in case and those trousers and those uh, garments and then I bring them in. Um, this at least was available with 9.5. I'm pretty sure it's still available with 10, but we're not referencing it right now anyway. This. So this is that basic pant that most patterns you'll see used in modern day. This is that self-balancing system pant. This does not have a fly and this does not account for where the gentleman will wear his trousers. And it does have the dart for the waist, but it does not fit as well as the other pant here, which I will be shifting over to next. And as you can see, this is the one that I've pretty much fitted and I've made this for that render previously that we have on our cover page that we have on our thumbnail. 
And this one does fit him much better just because the difference between these two pants is this one is a fitting block. So this one here from the, the uh, self-balancing system, this is for making a block to fit somebody. Whereas this is an actual pant that has the pieces that, um, like the waistband. This actually here is for uh, button suspenders, which I will be faking. Because we don't want to have those collision issues while we're building the rest of this garment. Um, let me make sure I'm actually logged in on Twitch. Before we move on here so I can actually see. Okay, cool. Oh, I don't want to hear myself multiple times. How do I pop out the chat? Never mind. All right. Don't make me blog anybody else. All right, let's move on. So this is the pant that actually, this is the walking pant that actually fits my avatar. I can make this as well during the stream, but I think we'll do the easy, the shirt first, which we will use the modular mode, which I did see some people having issues with, I believe either on YouTube or in the Discord, I can't remember which. But I will show you guys how to use modular mode. first so I just wanted you to see these different pants and the pants that we did work on last time had fit issues this newer pattern is a better pattern obviously that's going to happen when you're looking at different historical patterns um one will definitely one will be a better quality pattern than the other one which is a good example here between these two these two wool trousers especially on the back which is where you can tell this one would need to have I'm gonna overlap this so we can see just for the last of this. This one is entirely missing the fitting in the waist portion as well as it's flaring out on the leg where it doesn't need to be. And obviously this pattern is much shorter. These patterns I'm using that I'm referencing are for, are the grid style patterns that you are to use with actual measurements. Whereas in this way that we're doing this, I need to do a lot of pattern manipulation from just tracing those because I'm not actually using those measurements when it's just a guide. Okay, so let's go ahead and make our shirt first. I want to show open image in new tab. I'm stealing this high collar from this sack coat which I will share in the history of the sack coat in the chat as well. So welcome, welcome to Marvelous Designer and some fashion history. So I'm stealing this high collar and I'm going to just been, be manipulating one of our patterns that already exists for a button up shirt. And I'm gonna use that to make this collared shirt because the only things that are really going to be seen are the collar, just the center front, like button and then probably the cuff so i'm gonna move him into the um the parallel pose his arms are at his sides this is the pose that you're going to want let me rotate here to use if you are working with the modular mode so i'm double clicking going to pose only his arms are at his sides I'm going to close my library, then I'm going to Modular Configurator. A lot of people don't know that this is an option and a feature that comes with Marvelous Designer. These are basically free pattern blocks that you can use in reference. Just keep your avatar's arms at their sides. So I'm going to Men's, and I want a shirt. 
I want just a basic button-up shirt. So that collar is just a standing collar, so it's very similar to these. I'm going to go with this collar here, just because it is closest in shape compared to the others. Then I'm just going to pick the simplest shirts here. And I'm just going to push this up a little bit, just so it fits him a little better. And simulate. So this is what someone I saw either on YouTube or on our Discord had some issues with was if you wanted to bring in multiple different pieces and so you wanted this shirt but then you wanted to put one of the jackets on you can just you need to remove the modular relationship or these modular frames so you just right click in the 2D window and choose remove modular relationship modular frames will be deleted yes So really, all of this here, it fits pretty much fine. Uh, thank you. Yeah, actually, we've finally started streaming. Um, Lou, Van <laughs> Lou, we finally just started streaming. Um, we stream every two weeks or so, and we will stream a different... We'll have a different style of stream. Um, we generally do two parts. Oh, <laughs> you see a cat in the corner. Um, we'll do generally two-part streams right now. We used to do Q&A streams if people want me to do. Q&A streams, we're happy to add more of those as well. So let's go ahead. I need to make this collar. I am going to show you the image again. Open image in new tab. So I'm making this standing collar here. So what I need to do is I need to raise the collar stand and then I need to square off this, um, the actual collar itself. So I'm pushing that over there. So I can just freeze all of this to make it easier to simulate. And then, first of all, I need to raise the collar stand. You can do math, but I'm not going to. Close enough, and now I want to adjust this collar here. Again, I'm making this just basically meeting at center front. We will not be doing the tie today, but actually what I want to do is this. That's close enough, because we're, we're just kind of mixing together a bunch of different sack suits. So what I'm doing now is I'm actually cutting this collar because I want to make this symmetrically linked across that center line. Unfold with symmetrical editing. And so. I'm just letting it go into place again. I haven't made any patterning changes except for now if I do something on the one side, it'll happen to the other. And now, I'm just going to cheat it this way. I'm going to square this off because it's going to be pretty simple. Marvelous Designer is quite easy to learn, actually. We have the free learning tutorials on our YouTube channel, as well as... If you know any vector program, really, you can basically use Marvelous Designer. Um, the only difficulty is kind of learning how fabric works if you've never worked with fabric because how Marvelous Designer works in creating garments or cloth is how it works in real life. So if you have any sewing experience or any kind of fitting experience or understand clothing really at all, you do have a step up. But it's pretty easy, especially if you follow our, yeah, 
it's pretty easy, especially if you just kind of follow the, the newer tutorials. Um, they're a little bit easier to follow than our older ones. Swapping over to my edit sewing. I've just squared this off, so now it's going to be flat. And then I'm going to true up this center front piece here. So now these are going to lay flat where I want them to when I make this pattern change. And okay, I'm just going to do it this way. Here again, I'm just um, making this into a point, which then I'll, I'll soften later, but I do want to make sure that they can meet at center front. So I'm just adding a segment point here. And then what I'm actually going to do is remove these curved lines, selecting those lines holding shift, and then I can just right click and delete all curve points. Convert this one to a curve point. And now I can check the fit. This works for all colors, by the way, including in real life. So a good cheat for this as well is this should be a 90 degree angle. And then you can check your fit. So this is telling me I need to add a good bit more. So let's use the slash and spread option. And simulate. And I can do that again until they meet at center front, which then I can clean this up. So they're meeting at center front here and I can see that it's really deep. It's really long and I don't want it to be that long. Convert to curve point. Join these um, fold lines, merge to point. Convert to curve point. So it's a little bit cleaner. And stiffen it just to see. And I can see something's going on with the roll line here. So I'm just going to check my internal line, these two. 348, I'm just going to make it 360 degrees. There we go. And now that this is meeting at center front, I do want to clean this up a little bit more. Keep it about the same length width. Right now I'm just cleaning it up, which I recommend you do. And then I'm just going to go ahead and curve this collar. So you can see here it is pretty much square and curved here, but when it's on the person, it's not that square. Or when it's flat, it's not as square as it's looking here. I think I want to make it, I want to make that look a little bit better. I'm just going to grab, convert to curve points, and then make this a curve. I want to make this taller. It's not as tall as I like. There we go. Anyway, we're going to go ahead and move on, but this is how to make a simple collar and adjust the collars that already exist and that are available to you. Come here. I do want to pull it away a little bit from center front.
So there is the approximation of our collar. I could spend a little bit more time on it, but I do want to move forward. I have the finished one already available, already like made so we can keep going. File save as project, color two. Uh, yes, thank you. Thank you, Rosemary and Eric in the chat. Um, okay. So now let's go ahead and move on to the pants. I'm gonna I'm going to quickly draft these new pants just so you guys can see it. For those of you who are new. Just how I'm sitting. So I have a pattern that I found online that is a better pattern. So I'm going to be making these pants again. To do this, I'm adding a background image. So right click, background image. This is the best way to kind of trace something that's similar to what you're working with. Um, rather than what some people have done. Uh, I know we had a question in our forum that had this kind of issue. They thought that the only way to trace a pattern was to bring it in as a texture. You can bring any JPEG in by just right clicking, add background image, and then choose your image. And I'm just going to go ahead and choose my image here. Meet these walking trousers. So these clearly need to be scaled up. I'm going to show you why. So we can see here I'm putting, this is the front. And I'm putting the front. <laughs> so funny. I'm putting the front at his, um, at his rise here. And I can see that this would be making us a pair of um, <laughs> shorts. So we're not, we don't wanna make shorts, we wanna make some slacks. So I do want to increase the scale here. So I'm gonna do 150, see how that looks. It's still a little, sh it's still a little short. Let's try 170. That is looking better. Maybe 160, 168, no, 68. You can always resize it a little bit later as well. I'm gonna go with 168 just for speed here. Um, Zofo, actually, if you scroll up, I did share links to some historical um, uh, sack back coats and things like that. So here I'm just going to basically be tracing this. This is one of the... There's one of a couple of pictures of this actually. And I just used backspace to take a single step back. And I've basically made my front of my trouser here. I think I do want to change this though. I have two photos. Let me make sure I have the right one up.
isn't actually the one I want. Uh, 168. Desktop. Trouser. Right, this is the other one that they have. I just wanted to steal the center back from this one just because it already incorporates the dart in a different way than the previous one did. This one is different though. Just slightly, because this is the updated one. This is the revised version from the other textbook. I'm gonna make this a little smaller, 157. And adjust my points. All right, there we go. And we'll keep finishing this one up because this one has a different shape. This one has some darts included. That's why it looks a little bit different. And this is already made to accommodate a button um, a button, what is, what's the word? I just said it earlier. A button up, um, suspenders, button suspenders. That's what the center backs are for. We will not be making the button suspenders today though, just because it is not needed and it won't be shown. So now that I've traced this, I do want to do a little bit of cleanup here. I see I made a mistake. Just with my curve line. And I'm just going back using the edit curve point tool or it's the V hotkey. And I'm just adjusting this curve. So this part here is going underneath the rise here. This one is going over the back and then this part here is going to be accommodating for the lower back. And I do want to adjust for this. Sorry about the zooming in and out. You can see that this pant actually goes towards the back. This has a curve to the leg because it is accommodating for it wrapping around the leg and there being a small amount of twist. Actually, I'm gonna leave that one. Okay. So now that we have our pants, oh. Yeah, I did that. I haven't crashed that in a long time. I just tried to use a tool, three tools at the same time when I shouldn't have done that. I'm going a little, I'm going faster than I should be going. So just don't use the tools, wrong tools. Yes, I would like to recover my autosave. Thank you. Okay, swapping that back out. I now have a front and a back. 
and I no longer need this pattern. So I'm going to go ahead and go back to add background image and just select reset. And I no longer have that background image. So I have a front and a back and I need to make symmetrical pattern pieces. So I'm right clicking and choosing symmetrical pattern with, with sewing or control D. And then I'm going to turn on the arrangement points. And now that these are symmetrically linked, I can place them on my avatar, both of them at the same time. I do need to make sure that this is, okay, that is correct. And then I'm going to turn off my arrangement points and just do some quick sewing. Sewing these center fronts together Sewing the center backs together. Sewing the side seams. Am I doing the wrong side? Okay. This one goes to this one. And then sewing the inseam. And simulate. And this is supposed to actually be worn very high on him. If I zoom back out, let's see if I can find just a single pant or trouser without the coat over it. Often more than not. In this case, I can see that it is still quite large on him, so I can scale it down, but I do want to bring it up So I can see it's a little on the big side, so I'm just going to select all and hold shift and I can scale it this way just a little bit. You can get away with sometimes it will um, warp it in ways that you don't intend to. So just be aware. So I can just right click and I'm just going to make it 98% the size and let's see if that does it. See where it's falling, okay. Just pulling it up to his waist. And checking the fit. Let's check chat. Ah, uh, yes. The definition of the trouser. There we go. Looks like there is still some bulk here, so I do want to... Convert to curve point. Remove some of that bulk, so let's see, pull it out here and some here. So it is relatively baggy, so I am continuing to pull it up because it would be worn with his suspenders. As well as this would be wool, so I'm going to go ahead and grab some wool fabric. How to delete tacks. Go to your tack, edit tack option. You select the tack and you delete the tack. You select your tack line and you delete it. You will actually see me do it at the end of this stream when I bring in the coat again and delete the tacks from that. Do what melt and wool. Turn off tacks. Make the wool a 
neutral color for now. Since this is a closest, the closest garment that we're kind of referencing right now is a walking suit or the morning suit that you wear in the morning. Oh, that's what's causing me fit issues. Come on, get out of the shoe. Fine. There it goes. Thank you. Looks like I do need this to be a little bit longer on his leg, so I'm just going to go ahead and grab my hem. Just pull it down a little bit. Oh, is the cat being... Oh, there she is. Hi, Maddie. <laughs> <laughs> that's really funny, actually. Yeah, that is... That's Maddie. She is my, she is my uh, other co-host. Aside from Eric in the chat, she uh, judges me harshly all the time. This is too high on him. No, I was right to pull it in. All right. There's some fit issues happening right here, so I'm just going to go ahead and remove some of the space. Eh. Yes, thank you, Rosemary. This is a little bit long, but... um. I am trying to only do this in two hours. But yes, uh, what Rosemary said, uh, I don't know if the chat can see it on Twitch. Note the slight downward curve on the back of the hem to cover the ankle. Let's see here, as you can see. And the slight upward curve to go over the shoe to reduce the break. So the break on the shoe is where the fabric hits. Uh, let's make this 10 so you can see it. Ten particle distance for now. <laughs> Kool Aid Twisters, Eric. <laughs> oh, you got me with that one. But yeah, so here's the break. Um, I need to fix this. What's going on with the trouser? So there needs to be less volume here, so I'm just going to go ahead and add a little bit, cut out a little bit more using the curve points. Hopefully. No. I forget he's just so skinny. Well, anyway, we've basically made our pant here. Ignoring my little fit issue. I have my... The other ones that you guys will have does not have the fit issue. <laughs> that I will make available for download on the store later. Add project. I want to know why. I probably have the wrong scale for him. Cutter's Practical Guide to Trousers. And no. Oh yeah, he, it, it, wow. It really does not have a rise at all. This in fact has too much rise. That's why. 
I'm going to overlap these so you can see. So this has a little bit of a size difference, so I'm going to go ahead and fix that. The actual piece has this cut out just because of the zipper, but I'm just going to go ahead and, and cheat. I'm going to trace the one that does fit and lock it. and just reduce the uh, curve here. Oop. Let me clean up the workspace and yeah, I thought so. And then this needs to rise up a little bit, and then I need to make this curve a little bit more severe. And then that's pulling out some of those issues, but this is raising, this is a little high on him, so I'm going to pull it back down. And that should fall a lot better. There we go. Ah, that's why. Okay, let's clean this up. Sorry. Referencing my older work. I'm not going to be adding pockets in this case because right now he doesn't need pockets. He's going to be having a vest next. So as you can see, I traced the pattern. I'm making sure it fits his waist. These trousers were quite wide in the leg. So in fact, I do want to adjust this leg just a little bit. It'll be available for download on the store, not not for a little bit, but do do keep an eye out for the free downloads that are available on the Marvelous Designer store that you can reference from us. Come on. There we go. Thank you. But also you can use this as reference for as you have also all of the patterns. You can also use these to reference as you're working on them as well. Eh, I didn't want to do that. There we go. Close enough. That's a problem. I think it's just how it's laying on him. But anyway, we're going to go ahead and move on. We've made our pant. If you do want, I can show you how to do a faux fly. They did have flies for these, but they were button flies. They did not have the, oftentimes you did not see zippers. You would see buttons. So you can still do a false fly in Marvelous Designer. I'm just going to go ahead and do so just by drawing.
you can see here, I do need to fix this. Because it needs to be parallel. I could use the pattern offset option, but I'm just doing this pretty quickly. So if you want to make a false fly, I'm going to recommend you do. You make a segment point there. Um, remove, delete all curve points so it's straight. This is why that pattern had that odd issue there. Do the same thing with this one. Just because these patterns are so odd and they're pretty old. Delete curve points. So it's relatively straight. As you can see, it's worn straight here. So this is what's important. And then I'm using the trace tool or the I hotkey. Right click traces pattern. Right click and I'm just going to flip horizontally. So you can do the false flat. We do have these uh, in our tutorials as well. Flip horizontally. There's that other center front. I want to change. And then I need to remove that center front seam from where it is currently. I moved it. I didn't actually. There it is. Gotta move them both. So instead of just doing that one sewing stitch, you can do this together. So these would be a button fly, but in this case you kind of wouldn't, you still wouldn't see it. It would be an invisible fly, but it would still have that fold. So what's ha going to happen is that this is going to fold backwards. So this folds back into this internal line. This is going to be layer one to force that, to force this uh, facing into the back. And let that settle for a second. Make this back to layer zero. And then this piece is going to sew to this piece now. It's because uh, the lock option you're asking. Also, please don't caps lock. Um, I needed to lock, it. I can lock all my pattern outlines, but I did not want to do that. So I changed my mind. So now that I have this, I can just sew them together on the top. And then not that. So if I lock in my 2D window, uh, where is it? Stop simulating. Oh, I'm not in the right tool. Stop hitting B. Control A. 
Where did I put it? I don't use lock often. Um, da -da 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 -da. Anyway, um, might have it moved. Anyway, the difference between lock is it's the patterning window, and then freeze is the three D window. But anyway. These pants are clearly tight on him, so actually I would need to make these a bit bigger. Just for the sake of this demonstration here, they're not that big. So that this will lay flat. And that's how you can do a fake fly. And if you want to freeze in the 3D window, you can just go to Control K here. But it's different for the patterning. We have a few more pieces and we only have an hour. So I'm going to go ahead, delete this, please and thank you. And I'm going to be adding the vest now because we do need to make the vest. So we're going to go to, again, add background image, image file, men's Victorian suit. I have the self-balancing suit vest. I need to rotate this image 90 degrees, so just 90 degrees. I'm lining this center front line up with the center front line on our avatar. Clearly this is too small again, so let's do 200%. See how that works? Lining this up. Might be a little big on the sides. But it's close to the same 150 small. I'm looking to make sure that it co goes across his shoulder. So 175. There's a little line here that is the center front line. I guess we'll do 200 and it's going to have some pattern manipulation. I did 168 but these patterns are a little different. So all of these are different. Even even when I brought in those, um, the trouser, it's slightly different from this, from this one. So unfortunately, I can't be consistent with all of these patterns. I wish it worked that way, Rosemary. I really do. But all these patterns are just different scales because this one's from a different book. This is from a different book from those other trousers. So. I guess we'll do one uh, we'll do 200%. This one has a lot of pattern manipulation anyway. As well as I'm going to be carving out a lot of this um, sleeve or the underarm anyway because I'm making this not to be accurate in the end but for an easier simulation for working it in another software afterwards. So I'd want to remove some of the bulk. So I'm just going to be cutting out a lot of the sleeve here. Fine. Segment point curve.
So I've just traced the front. I will make the internal line following here, but I'm going to finish tracing the back pattern. This is going to have a lot of things cut out of it, just because this isn't made for him. But actually, this is a great example of, um, I've talked about this before, but how a sleeve should look. It should look like an empty wine glass when you put the sides together. This is a nice way to have the sleeve um, transition into itself so it has a nice fit. And before I do anything else, we're going to take this center front line. Extend and trim because I just adjusted that. And why does it look like this? I guess it didn't need to be curved. That's fine though. So now that this is in here, I'm going to leave this on just in case because I'm probably going to have to cut something up. But I'm doing the same thing, making a symmetrical pattern. And this time I'm going to sew the center fronts together. You can do this in the 2D window or in the 3D window. I'm just using the segment sewing tool. Double click to finish if you are working in the 3D window. Again, I'm just turning on the arrangement points and I'm just going to place it. Always place it a little bit higher so that when it simulates, it will more likely, it'll fall because there is gravity. So when it's falling, it's not gonna fall through his torso. It makes it a little bit easier. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and sew sides to each other, tops to, uh, shoulders to each other, and center backs, and simulate. So it looks okay, it's a clearly too tall on him. And really all we need for this is the center front. So what I'm going to do is cut this up a little bit. Because we we're just going to have it peeking through. So I'm using the line 3D pattern tool. And I'm just going to draw in the 3D window directly on the garment. So this is too high on his neck, so I'm just going to go ahead and cut that. In my 3D window, or in my 2D window, I can see the line that I drew in the, my 3D window. I'm going to go right ahead and convert that to internal shape. I can check it. I see that I want to fix the neck here, just for the fit. So I'm just going to pull it down, so it's a smoother line. And then I'm going to go ahead and cut this. Cut. This one is colliding just a little bit, so I'm just going to pull it and give it a bit of a curve. It's just right here. That's what caused the issue, so I'm just going to choose cut, and there it is. And now I can delete these extra pieces and simulate again. This is coming away from him, so I'm going to check that by just rotating my shoulders here. And honestly, it's because of the curve. It's so funny how they have the... This is... Uh, again, this is a good, another good example of why my pattern didn't work for the other pants. This is just a diagram. Um, let me go back to the pattern here. This is just a diagram grid. As you can see, there are numbers corresponding to instructional notes. This doesn't fit him because this isn't meant to be accurate to scale of whatever specific size. 
So I'm going to have to start making adjustments here. Closing that back down. I'm just rotating these back so they are as close as I can to vertical again. And I want to, number one, fix the side seam. It's actually quite high. It's not hitting him where his waist actually is. At least that curve isn't. That's fine. This looks really funny. Um, but here, we'll, before we finish this, we're going to see how it fits over a shirt. Because it's not supposed to fit over him without the shirt on. We have it basically prepped because it does need to have the shirt and the pants because that is how it's going to be layered. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to freeze it, control K, move this out of my way, clear up my background image, reset, stop simulating, and then start adding in those garments. Oop, file, add garment. Actually, I want to add project, I think. File, add project. The color, making sure it's on add. I'm not loading my pose right now. I did want to lose my, load my pose. Add project because his arm's in a different position and he's sleeveless right now so I can get away with this. This time, yes. Sometimes you don't want to do that. Before I do anything, making sure to select my whole shirt here. It's going underneath. So when you're starting, now that I'm starting to layer things as I'm working, I'm going to be making the shrinkage weft on the shirt 80% and I'm going to make this vest layer one and when I simulate the shirt is going to shrink horizontally I also want to move it a little bit and simulate actually what I should have done was deactivate it By deactivating it, which is control J, it's not going to be um, calculated into the simulation. Whereas if I freeze it, it will be. So this will make it a little bit easier just because this does have buttons because this is from the modular mode. Again, checking those layers. Right now I don't need to worry about anything other than getting this shirt on him. Okay. So the shirt is on him. I'm going to do the opposite now. Well, I'm not simulating. I'm unfree. I'm reactivating my vest, making sure it's layer one. And since it's much more simple, it can come right out. And we can check how it fits by also adding in, well, first of all, I'm going to fix this, making sure that my left worn is overlapping my right, correct, correct. And I'm stiffening it just so I can get it to lay properly. There we go. 
Because right now this is that basic fabric. Silly menswear. Like, I have to keep checking. I'm like, left over right. Left over right. <laughs> there we go. It's beautiful. We're done. You can actually see here with the underarm, it's cutting up into him. This is so funny. But before I double check, before I do any more pattern manipulation, I do want to make sure how it fits with the pants. Because in real life, we would we have different, we have different fitting right now. But his actual pants are quite high. So I'm going to be adding the garment again. Add. No. So I have my pants. It's going to make this layer one. And then the vest is now going to be layer two. So the vest is going to go over the pants and the shirt, and then the pants are going to be going over the shirt. So I'm going to go ahead and simulate that. I am on Twitch, Matt Williams. We are actually on Twitch right now. Uh, Jay. Uh, you you can watch our, my streams on Twitch. This is the channel where we're streaming to both Twitch and YouTube at the same time. So here's my pants. And my vest is over my pants. And we can see it's actually fitting a lot better. Uh, yes, I'm also helping out the mesh, David. So I'm... With Marvelous Designer, you do want to work with the lower res lower resolution mesh as much as you possibly can, because th especially when you're pattern making at this point, when I'm working with um, when I start adding the details, I and I then am going to be making these pieces um, lower and lower um, particle distance. Right now, most of these are at twenty. I mean, obviously the collar is going to be at five. I think the shirt's at like ten. So now that the pants are in, I can fit it to the pants. Oops, I don't want to freeze that. Keep the shirt frozen, get the shirts tucked in. You can actually see since it's got the curve at the waist, but it's so high, it's fitting a little bit better. Uh, yes, thank you, Rosemary. All right, we do have some collision issues on the underarm. And I'm going to be putting that sack coat over this. So what I'm going to be doing is not accurate to this pattern. But it is a good trick for Marvelous Designer. And keeping your work a little bit cleaner, especially if you have to simulate this. If no one's going to be seeing the underarm... Then, I'm, then you can just cut out even lower, which is what I'm going to do now. You. There. There. And okay. So while this is here, I'm going to go ahead and cut out, carve out this underarm. We would like to add more wind controllers. It is on the list for new features, but currently we just have the one. And Matt Williams, are you the one in the, dis in the forum that asked about how to place um, patterns in your workspace that's not on the cloth because I, I did cover that earlier but I'm happy to show you if you if if you're the one who had that question so again I'm just gonna go right ahead and carve this out actually oh 
Oh, okay. There's another one that's M. Williams, and I'm like, is that you? <laughs> All right, where am I? Oh, <laughs> I made it gray, but you can you can barely see it. But I'm carving this out, so I'm going to go ahead and... I'm fine with how it looks. I'm just going to go ahead and cut. Ah, all right, fine. I'm going to convert it to 3D line, to 2D line. Then I'm going to cut it. And I will clean this up just a little bit. And I'm just cleaning this up, even though it's not how it's really supposed to fit. It's going to fit a little bit easier underneath this jacket. Yes, thank you, Rosemary. Yeah, Victorian, like, vest without cloth. This one is from the um, balanced cutting system, so it did have a back. Because this is, this is basically that sack back suit this was that entire book is just a sack back suit pattern from uh, 1888 it's not the best honestly sack back sack suit but you know here we are and i'm just referencing that suit specifically In fact, this is, this is okay enough. I'm going to go ahead and leave this. And I'm going to go ahead, since we're here, I'm going to apply our buttons. Now I'm going to be starting to add pieces because I've already made the jacket. Next, I'm going to be starting to do the details. So we have buttons. Generally, these suits have one, two, three, four, five. Some of them have five. Some of them have four. And in this case, some of these only needed to be... Actually, I'm sorry, suits. The vests. The vests should have one, two, three, four, five. I think this one's going to have five or six. I'm referencing some of these uh, images here. Yeah, magnifier, go away. So this one has one, two, three, four, five. So I'm probably just going to stick with the five. Go to my button tool. This one does have a slight curve to it, so I'm going to just put one here. And then go back to the button tool. Select this button. Control C, Control V. I'm holding shift. I'm going to have to move them sideways. But instead of clicking once, I'm right clicking and I'm doing the interval paste. I want a total of five, so I want a total of four. And here I can adjust the intervals. And this works with patterns, copying patterns and copying things. If you right click and paste, you have a bunch of different options as well. is going to cause a bit of a fit issue with it not directly over the apex but we're going to find out how that looks and I'm just grabbing these and I'm moving them over center front line as best I can I probably will not be buttoning this lower button because sometimes it was styled in that way that they did not do that wait ah, okay that's fine I keep doing women's wear <laughs> So I can convert this quite easily. I These need to actually be buttonholes. So right click, convert to buttonhole. Selecting them all again. Duplicate as button on symmetric pattern. The power of the right click, yep. Wait, which one is this? Did I actually have it right the first time? I did. Uh, 
Again, I'm just fixing these. Convert to buttonhole. This is why you do want to work with symmetrically linked patterns because it really helps when you're finishing things up. Uh, when, when you ask, wait, what, please maybe clarify because I have a 30 second lag. Convert to button. There we go. <laughs> okay. And then I can take the fasten button option and put button through the buttonhole. And then I'm just going to check the fit by removing my sewing. And now my buttons are holding my vest together. I will cheat just a little bit and add some stabilizer on center front. It is wool, but sometimes it helps. Is what I get. We are having some bunching here just because the buttons could be higher. So let's see. Eh. I'll just leave the gaping. It's a stylistic choice at this point. Yeah, the gaps bother me, but you know what? I'm going to go ahead and choose style choice because I only have 30 minutes to finish this up. <laughs> uh. And also answer questions if we have any. Uh, I haven't seen the chat for a second. What CPU am I using? I'm using a... Let me check my CPU. This is this is my personal tower. Um Where's my Intel? That is true actually in the Victorian time in the Victorian era these these were generally Intended to be relatively ill-fitting now that I now that I'm looking at it. A lot of these jackets even had just single button at the top, and I'd bet you that a lot of these were off the rack sack uh, sack coats. Whereas this one was more bespoke, or it's clearly meant to fit whatever uh, form this is on. But a lot of these were styled with just the button or just none at all. Which is interesting. Yeah, not everything fit just right as well as I'm just choosing this as my life now. You know, I don't remember what I'm running, um, but it is the minimum, specifically the minimum one I think I last checked, because I built this PC back in 2016. So it's the minimum for what you need right now. Yes, actually, yes. Thank you, Rosemary. Rosemary will be quizzing everybody at the end of this. Just so you all know. This is a this is a history class. <laughs> Unintentionally so. I like I like doing the history classes though. I hope you guys like the history streams. They're fun, I think. 
I do want to curve the uh, hem here, so I'm just going to use the fat smooth curve tool. Just zooming in. I'm not simulating. I'm just curving this bottom one, and in fact, I'm going to unbutton this bottom button. <laughs> I'm just kidding, Rosemary. So let's go ahead and move my tools back. Freeze everything. Hiding. And then I'm going to bring in that last piece, which is the sack back coat. Notice I have not resized my shirt because I'm putting the jacket over it or the coat over it. I'm going to need to keep it um, shrunk for a little bit. Make jod hoppers, Daniel. I love jod hoppers. There's a few jod hoppers in the um, some of the textbooks I, I linked. And project file add a project the sack coat making sure it's on add he should be in the exact same pose I just need to move this out of my way Jod hoppers are amazing. Please make them. I love them. We have jod. I feel like we have a jod hopper discussion at least once every couple of months in the Discord. Jod hoppers. Jod first. I always called them jod hoppers, but then again, I've only ever really read it and like discussed it a few times. I'm bringing the layers down to zero for everything except for the coat. The coat is now going to be layer one. Double checking my layers here. And I'm gonna go ahead and simulate. I like jaw, I don't know why, I just like, I thought it was jaw hoppers. No, it's jaw furs. Jaw fur. Jod purse. Man, I thought they were jod hoppers. That was so much cooler. I'm disappointed. So here's the coat that we made in the previous stream. Oh, that makes sense. I really only ever read it. So here we are seeing a little bit of a collision issue, mainly because of this button. But I have already frozen the button. So what I need to do is something quite simple. It, because it's frozen, it's not causing any further collision issues and I don't need to worry about the placement of this button. So what I'm going to do is go up to the select mesh options. I'm going to select mesh box. I know where this is. I'm just selecting it. You can see here, I'm selecting this area and I'm just gonna pull it out. Let that settle for a minute. Check the other side. This side looks good. This is small on his arm just because it is still 80% weft right now. And in fact, I've actually just put this one here. And let's check the fit on the underarm. Not causing any issues. Yeah, select mesh is great, especially the, the box. The vest. We'll need to add buttons to the vest soon, but we were, we're layering, so we're doing it last. I am not giving him a tie just for the sake of the speed of the stream. And this is a very simple that this is a very simple coat. In fact, it doesn't have any kick pleats or anything. There are, again, different 
versions of the sack coat. I linked this good resource here that I found. This is a much simpler version of the sack coat and a cheaper version if he were to purchase this. Obviously, the vest doesn't fit him perfectly. So this is clear this is probably bought from Macy's. I, well, we're going to we're going to say that he bought this from Macy's back in the day. We're just going to go with that. Now that it's on him, I don't have any collision issues. I've adjusted the vest so that it's not we don't have any issues with the underarm. I do want to just pop out one of his pockets because we did cheat it last time. What is this? I want to fix that. Thank you. So we're just going to give him, we're going to pop out one of his welt pockets here. We did a fake welt. We're just going to do a We're just going to have one of these popped out, just for the sake of it. Click and drag, turn off texture. And then I'm just going to go ahead and sew it to the lower portion. And since it's all the way out over here, I don't want to simulate, so a little cheat for that is to right click in the 3D window and choose superimpose over, under, or side. In this case, I'm going to choose side. Let's try over, sometimes side works, sometimes over is better. Well, that's close enough. And then I'll simulate. Make this layer one. There we go. Over. There we go. And now I have my welt pocket. This one's just peeping out and that's fine. We're going to give him... Yes, I'm simulating. Thank you. There we go. Well, let's flip the normal. Looks like it's backwards. Oh no, I already had it right the first time. There we go. It's just a different color right now. So we'll just have that one pocket popping out. And I'm going to go ahead and apply the buttons just for it to look nice. This time I'm going to show you what I didn't do with the vest, which was offset as an internal line. Uh, let's do 20. We'll do 20 particle list or 20 millimeters as the guideline just for arbitrary measurement's sake. I'm keeping my tack here. I will put one button here. I'm going to be opening up the jacket, but I did want you to see what it would look like closed. And then we're going to do the same thing that we did previously. Control C, Control V, holding shift. I'm going to do four more. One, two, three, four. And do I want to do four or do I want to do three? This is a cheap one, so we're going to do three. This is a cheap sack coat that he got from Macy, so we're going to do this for the four. This is fine because I'm just going to move it one at a time. And again, because they are still symmetrically linked, I'm just going to go ahead, select all of my buttons, right click and choose a duplicate as buttonhole on symmetric pattern. I do have two layers here, so I do have a linked layers, but they're not being duplicated onto those pieces. 
So we have our buttonholes and we have our buttons. I can change my buttonhole style if I wanted. I'm just going to choose the square style. You can't really see it right now. So let's go ahead and fix that. We'll go to our fabric. Everything but this button up shirt is going to be that same material because I'll, you know, he had enough to f afford a matching suit, but not the best matching suit. clean up my workspace a little bit here. I'm selecting all of this, making sure it's all the wool melton. And I made a texture for this, so I'm going to texture desktop men's Victorian suit. And I have a suit print that I made. Which is similar to one of the walking suits we had up earlier. Let's find it. any of these but it's clearly starting to look like that picture that I showed you earlier I do want to change this a little bit so we're going to go to desaturate make sure that's that's on and I did want to make this bit of a no, <laughs> yellow we're gonna make it yellow I want to make it a bit of a greeny brown Let's just say about there is close enough. We'll turn on the turn on this guy. And then we'll go to the buttonholes, and they're clearly the wrong color. And my buttons. So let's check those. Button. This is just the default button, so let's go ahead and adjust that as we start to finalize this. I'm just going to color color grab. for the button and then make it a little bit just a little bit warmer because why not hmm. I lost the photo all right, so I'm going to change this a little bit then. Because then I'm going to make it no longer fabric matte, but I do want to make this plastic. So it's got a little shiny shine to it. Thank you. Yeah, I've, it's a Czech houndstooth. It was closer to that walking suit that we had, or the morning suit, morning walking suit that we had um, on the last stream. And then I'm going to do the same thing to the button holes, just selecting them, checking which one it is. Again, using the color picker. But since it's thread, I, I'm going to make it a little bit darker. And we're getting there. I do want to make this 10. Oh, this is also thin. Let me make this thick. There it is. And now I can go ahead and start moving on with the top stitching. I do want to remove this internal line because I don't need it anymore. And then I can go ahead and go to my top stitching add top stitching. This is a pretty basic coat, so I'm going to be using just a, mile, a small offset, 3.2 millimeters. 
7.8 millimeters, I think. And I'm just going to be doing that all around the coat. This is a cheap coat. That's why we're getting away with it. And I'm going to do the same thing. Actually, I'm going to... Again, just color pick this. So we have, there it is. So we have our edge stitch. Do the same to the collars. Ugh. It is pretty wide. I'm gonna fix it. I'm gonna change that. We'll do. quarter inch offset ish and then I'm going to make sure it is on both sides so we can see it here on the turned collar I'm gonna make a copy of this and I'm just going to make it white and I'm going to apply the top stitch to the collar and the collar stand But I do want to make the uh, offset just a little bit closer. You can see it while it's still frozen here. And then I'm going to zoom back out. Just apply the first top stitch to the sleeves. This is a very, very cheap coat. As we can see, I'll apply some buttons so it'll it'll be a fake. It'll have the fake little plaque in here. Oh. Duplicate it to the other sleeve. And then I'm going to just clean this up a little bit. I need to remove this internal line. So I'm done editing most of this. So I'm going to remove linked editing. And then just delete this. So I have just those single placket, just so I have the um, shirt pocket here. I'm going to just unfreeze everything just so we can see it. And for the sake of everyone being able to see underneath this, I'm going to delete that tack and simulate it so we can open up the coat. And we still have one less, one more thing to do, which is to resize this shirt. Make it 100%. So that does fit him correctly again. And it's taking up the space inside of the jacket. Peep the cuffs. Hello. And then just for the sake of being able to see inside, we didn't create a f of an entire, uh, we didn't actually create a full lining. They will be uploaded eventually onto the Marvelous Designer store as a free asset so that you can reference it for learning. Not, not exactly right now. I just made all of these assets. 
from scratch. Trying to do chat hotkeys and then also trying to do stream at the same time. So I've unbuttoned his jacket here. He should be wearing a tie, but he's not wearing one. And I don't have the mock fly on this pattern, on this piece. Just so we can see it in Marvelous Designer. He's on the way to the pub after work. Exactly. He's taking his tie off. He's done. He's done for the day. Oh, you know what we haven't put on here? We haven't put on the... Just for fun, we'll also apply. There's no understitch on this one. It is just... Got this. Actually, we're going to make it cheaper. It doesn't even have a real, doesn't, it's not even lined. We're gonna say this isn't even lined. It's just got a facing. Offset is internal line. I'm gonna make his coat really cheap. We're gonna make it so that you can actually see his uh, his facing through the coat or through the vest. To do that, I'm just gonna copy this top stitch. Make it a zero offset. And then And I'll toggle off this so you can see it. There, now it's even cheaper. He only has the facing. And this portion here would be uh, pick stitched. So here we have our we have our jacket. I will show you the render that I made previously because it looks nice. Wrong piece. Where is it? And suit. But here is the suit styled. I want to see what you guys can see. But here is our jet. Oh, there is. There's the other one. We were sort of referencing this last stream. So this is it rendered. You'll see a better render online late, a little bit later. But here's this jacket and suit set as well. So this is this is it rendered, and then this is it in the here. I chose a different color, but it's fine. So let's go ahead and move to the end here. Thank you guys so much for joining me. I can't believe I actually finished it <laughs> during this stream. It always takes two. Sometimes it takes three. Yeah, this one, this one, he's just, oh, actually, let me, let me grab it. Um, add image. So big. This is him heading heading after work after heading to the to the pub after after the stream. He's he's done. He's tired. <laughs> he's like I'm I'm done. But thank you all so much for joining. Um, if you have questions, feel free to um, throw them in the chat now. But um, this does finish the menswear 
stream from Victorian menswear for the sack coat. Which the resources are available in the chat as well as I've shared a lot of the resources in Discord as well. So let me grab my cheat sheet here. So for those of you who are new to Marvelous Designer, here's a link to our Discord channel. Um, Rosemary's uh, one of our power users on our Discord channel, and she's very kind and very nice. She was uh, also helping give us some fun facts and information, uh, historical information during the stream. This will be available eventually, but I, I can't guarantee, like, next week. Um, probably in a, in a couple days. Keep an eye out. Um, actually... It'll be available once the blog is up for this stream, because we did just finish it. Um, we do have a blog on our website. Let's go to MarvelousDesigner.com. Grab that. When it comes out, we'll probably announce it on social media for the this piece, as well as the previous stream, which was the Rococo dress that was hard to make a thumbnail for. For those of you who are on our Twitch, here is a link to our YouTube channel. We will let the 14 days expire for these streams, but if you want to come back and actually see the rest of these streams, they will be here on YouTube. Well, thank you, David. Um, for those of you who are new to Marvelous Designer who have never used it before, we do have a bunch of free tutorials. So here's just a link to those tutorials in the chat as well. And I know some people might have some technical questions. I don't know why I'm seeing it double. And if you are having any technical difficulties, here is a link to support. As well as on, if you, I know someone asked about GP, about um, the system requirements at the very least. On our website, you will see um, a system requirements option and you can double check and reference. Anything that's above it should be fine. Um, above the minimum requirements, you'll be fine working with Marvelous Designer. Um, making sure I'm not missing anything. But yeah, so if you have any questions as well as you'll see here, the community at MarvelousDesigner.com. If you do want us to do more um, of these types of streams as well as um, the stream style that we did in the very beginning when we first started, which were the... Um, the Q&A streams where we did have some people submit questions or as well we took questions from our Discord channel and we just answered those technical questions or the how-to questions. Feel free to submit your stream ideas and stream style requests. You can always submit them here to our community at MarvelousDesigner.com email. Um, but we are only going to be taking just kind of those requests. If you have technical issues that you need help with, please don't send them to the community email. Please do send them to the support uh, support email. I actually just realized that's the support link. But that's It's the same thing. Um, in fact, it'll be faster in helping you solve your problems um, in creating a support ticket. Uh, did we have any questions before we ended the stream today? Right, yay, thank you guys so much for joining. Um, I hope you guys learned a lot. Um, I haven't actually uh, shown a lot of the finishing features until recently because a lot of the time most people want to stay and just kind of watch it building from scratch. But there's a lot of like button features. Like uh, I noticed a lot of um, you didn't know that you can just copy and paste the button on there um, with the right click, the power of the right click. <laughs> Thank you all so much for joining us today, then. If you have any more questions, feel free to join us on our Discord. Um, I am one of the moderators on the Discord. So I'm, I'm watching, so behave yourselves, obviously. Uh, yes, the coat does look quite thick. It is, um, it is, it is a wool coat. So again, thank you all for joining us. Thank you, Rosemary, in the chat. You always make it more fun. And again, in the chat, helping answer questions as well is Eric. Thank you so much, Eric, for helping me moderate today. And we will see you all on the next stream. <laughs>